seems to work. Hi, chat. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is the stream, the first stream uh, where I solve competitive programming problems of the week, or at least talk about them. Those are mainly problems from Code Forces, and here's the plan. But we'll see. Maybe next week I will modify something. Every week on the weekend I will grab a few interesting problems. So maybe the solution, the solution is just nice, or it's very educational and I will talk about them in a, in a live stream. And the stream today is for Division 2 problems, so Code Forces rating up to 1900. Next week it will be Division 1 problems, so something more difficult, let's say up to 2500 rating or so, but tailored for, like, named for Division 1 viewers. Today uh, we go easier. Uh, problem, today problems are mainly from suggestions from my Discord server, go join it if you want to suggest stuff as well in the future but i think also it will be reasonable to just ask problem setters hey from what from your contest from the past week uh, what was the interest some interesting problem to discuss three problems that we will for sure discuss today are uh, code forces book uh, this one carrying conundrum and correct bracket sequence. I actually have a list of six problems and we'll see how it goes. At least it will be those three. I also have something from AdCoder and something from CodeShop. I want to use those three platforms. Uh, for compressed bracket sequence will take most time so it will be at the end because I also want to implement the solution in better time complexity. The difficulty range today is from 16 to 1900. So this is division two. So today is uh, code versus difficulty 16 to 1900. And I will consider turning out of the chat, I'm at least not displaying it, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, here's the first problem book. Uh, I need the link, of course. And I will work on the format. Maybe I will create a Code Forces block every week, or just one block for all of those. Uh, Twitch in the chat, you can see link to this book problem. And let's start with that. I think I should hide tags. Should I? Uh, not that important. Uh, my link seems to expire. Now, now it should be up to date. Yeah, problem book. If, do I really want to read the statement? Um, yeah. We're given a list of chapters mm. with requirements, meaning one chapter must be read before the other. Also, I'm not sure if this is the best first problem. Well, let's go. Mm. Meaning that uh, before you understand subchapter, apparently you need chapters one and four. Instead of reading the statement, let's just create a proper drawing. This is, uh, I guess I want to grab at least my book difficulty. Difficulty is 1800 from Code Forces round 743. All right. There are requirements. Maybe before you read chapter two, you need to read chapters one, four, and six. Maybe before you read chapter one, you are required to read chapter three. And before chapter three, actually, there are no requirements. Before chapter four, there maybe you need six. Before five, no requirements, and so on. Before six, maybe again, no requirements. This is the input. And here's uh, the, the strat strategy, here's, here's what we need to compute. If you just go through chapters from 1 to n and read them, if all the requirements are satisfied, then how quickly will you read everything? Let's simulate what happens in our first iteration through everything. Uh, we look at chapter 1. Can we read it? No, because we don't know chapter 3. Uh, then can we read chapter two? No. Can we read chapter three? Yes. 
So chapter 3 is done. Chapter 4, we cannot read that. Chapter 5, done. Chapter 6, done. Because those do not have requirements. We once went through everything. Now we start again. Can we read chapter 1? Yes, because 3 is read. Uh, chapter 2, requirements, requirements are 1 for 6. Nope. 4, yes, we can read it because 6 is done. And then that was second iteration. And finally, in the third iteration, we will also read this one. Uh, oh, I need to ping on Discord. Problems of the week. Uh, no, you cannot suggest problems now. I already chose problems that I think are are nice and they are from last two weeks or so. Uh, we need to simulate this process quickly. The uh, The constraints are, are big. The number of chapters and the total number of requirements is let's say 200,000. Uh, actually it doesn't matter what it is exactly. Oh, yeah, it is 200,000 test cases but the sum of n is at most this. Uh, also because this stream has targeted um, cut versus difficulty, uh, then also it's best for you if you watch the stream, if you have a cut versus rating, let's say, I don't know, from 1200 to 1800 or so, I think then it will be very beneficial for you. So basically division two, but no, not really division three. All right. First, how we simulate this? Uh, there are two solutions for this problem. Uh, first is that, that we can simulate and very basic simulation will be go through chapters and check if all the requirements are met. Uh, but it will for sure be very slow because we can have n long repetitions of everything. So it's not a good idea to just have two nested for loops each of size n. Uh, then something slightly better um, is maybe first for every chapter I don't go through all its requirements. Maybe while true, while not everything is read, I go through chapters from 1 to n and you know, if requirements, if can read, then read. That's the brute force. And close all the brackets. So first, can read. Instead of going in again and again through all the requirements, you can just keep the count. The count how many requirements are still not met. So, it makes sense to call it degree or actually input degree. So I create an input degree array of size n and it says how many other uh, requirements there are still that are not met. And then when you are done with something, uh, let's say you reach chapter four, then you would need to go through all the chapters that you can read now thanks to chapter four. And you can mark them as input degrees decreased by one. I call this input degree because it makes a lot of sense to treat this input as a graph. You need to read 3 before 1. You need to read uh, a lot of things before 2, 4, 6, and uh, four is, 6 is required before 4. So this is the uh, problem. And if you think about it like that and about those requirements, it makes a lot of sense if you think about topological sort. Just still values are here very important one through n the order matters because the statement said we read chapters from one to n uh, in in this case yes three chapter three is the first one to be read and uh, what we need to say is we need to say how many repetitions there will be from one to n if you are late to the stream you can just grab the link again and read the statement yourself mm. You should think about the topological sort for sure here, and then you will realize that mm, this can read can be just checking if current input degree of this vertex is equal to zero. Whenever you read something, if you remember what are edges going out of here, mark them as their input degrees decreased by one, and then you will be able to very quickly do this. And this thing that you see right now on the screen, this is quadratic. This is O of n squared. And let's simulate it on, on this graph, on this input that we see. Uh, when we get to node 3, or you can look at the graph, you get to c equal to 3, and its input degree is equal to 0. 
I will write down input degrees for everything. Those are the requirements that are still not met. You get for to c equal to 3, its input degree is 0. So what you should do, what this line does, the read, it should go through all the edges going out of this node, and for each of those you should uh, decrease the input degree by, uh, by 1. Because what we are actually doing is we are removing this node. So now this input degree gets decreased to 0. Next time you get to node 1, you should say that those uh, the input degree is indeed 0, so you can read it. So this should say uh, mark as red, so let's say is red of c is equal to true. Obviously we still we need here if not is red. I will move this. Oh no, not like that. Okay. Uh, okay, no. Here you go. If it's not red, then read it and also mark all the neighbors. Uh, edges going out of C, you need to say in degree of X minus minus. Okay, and now that's a nice solution like topological sort. And now to improve it, we shouldn't go through mm -hmm. chapters. Like we shouldn't go through so many chapters that are not yet read and that maybe we are not allowed to touch. And instead of that, we need to quickly jump to the next chapter that we are allowed to read. So to the next, like, maybe I've just read chapter three. Among four, five, six, I want to know what is the smallest out of those that I can still do. And for such next smallest value, uh, what is best to, the best thing to apply is a set. C++ set. Where this set should contain everything that can be read right now and always you can use for example lower bound not for example just you use lower bound on the current c to get the next value that you can read this, so this set, set should contain everything that is not yet read and its input degree is zero whenever you decrease somebody's input degree by one if it becomes zero you should check that here if it becomes zero then insert it to a set and now we get rid of this iteration over C and instead always we will do C is equal to uh, S lower bound of previous C. I didn't meant that. Like that. And then here, if uh, this input degree of X becomes zero, insert to a set as well. Of course, also erase C from the set because now it's done. And then while true should just change to repeat n times. And this thing, instead of quadratic, is now nice and log n solution. And log n. Uh, of course, if uh, we are at, let's say, 3, and in the set there is nothing greater than 3, then we should just go back to 0. And so we drop the very first value in the set, the smallest value. If you have some questions, now is a good time to ask those. How do you count number of steps? As I go, I just count them. If so, if I know that I jump from c equal to three to c equal to seven, I if if they ask me about the number of chapters, the chapters I need to look this up, then I will just add seven minus three. Uh, no, just how many times you will read the book. So here nothing just that if you are at let's say the current set is two four uh, let's just say two four if the current c is seven six and now you need to get from the set the next value after six this will be two this means that you are looking at chapter six you need to get to the end of the book and then back to the beginning of the book and this is one more you know iteration for the full book so it will be something like if uh, S contains value value bigger than C, then go there. Else, it will be answer plus plus, and C becomes minimum in S. Uh, it's not how you run; you get minimum of a set. Is red is not a map. Whenever you have indices from 1 to n, you just have an array. Is red is a Boolean array of size n. 
your ACC while also setting it to a new value, and then create a helper variable. This should be enough for you to now understand the solution. And then very important, whenever you read any editorial or here, watch a video, implement it now yourself. Where are we inserting the nodes in the set? Um, you insert just by saying s dot insert value. And so here there will be line, so this happens. And then if in degree of x is equal to zero, then s set insert x. All right, next problem. Uh, oh, not, not next problem, next solution to this problem. Uh, there is a linear solution here. Uh, well, it's not required. If n is 200,000, then not doesn't matter what is the exact time limit. We can do n log n almost always. Uh, by the way, just reading, no matter how you read, just reading even might be treated as n log n just because you read character by character. Reading is slower than iterating arrays. So problems very rarely distinguish between O of n and n log n. Uh, okay, but how to solve this problem in O of n? I think we should again look at this graph. But I want to get it without getting the text, which is apparently tricky. Here we go. And this is the graph and I told you already that topological sort is important but maybe here without simulating the full thing we can understand how many times we'll go through the book uh, for Python set is not sorted oh yeah for, for Python everything is more difficult you can use a segment tree but really Python on level of getting close to division one is very difficult if you don't know segment tree so many times in C++ it's just very easy. In Java, I think there is three map. In Python, you need something sorted that is able to jump through stuff. Can we look at this drawing and understand how many times we will actually go again to like chapter one? Uh, let's look at this path because every path means is, is some limitation. We will read chapter two very late because we are limited by chapter three, chapter one. If we are looking at such a path, we know that in the first run for the book, we will read three. And then in the next run, we will read one and two. Let's look at another path, six, four, two. We will in the first run read six, then four, then two. If there is a path that looks like this, 10, 6, 8, 3, 1, I claim that this path means that the answer is at least 4. Because we cannot read those before we read 10. So we will read 10 in the first iteration for the book. Then we will read 6 and 8. Those are increasing. Then 3, then 1. That's a 4. And uh, what can we do with that? Well, maybe we should do topological sort. And as we do it, we should update some values. That's one idea. And the other is to split edges into two types. Uh, one type of edge will be uh, from like here from 10 to 6. If we go like that, then we spend one coin, let's say. Uh, going going from 10 to 6 actually requires starting the book again. So the question is, if we have any path, then how many times we go from bigger to smaller value? Because then it means we cannot do it as we go through one book. Longest decreasing subsequence. Yes. So it seems to be longest decreasing subsequence in a graph, which sounds scary, I would say, but Rocky, don't spam, please. Uh, only questions related to the to the problem. Uh, longest decreasing sequence sequence in a directed graph, indeed. Um, or it's also okay to think about topological sort and try to modify that. 
But here's how we can do it as we run topological sort. By default, I I will say that every value can be read in the first um, in the first go through the book. Now I run topological sort, and always when I see something, and then there is an edge going to a lower value, then I know that this thing, I, I will remove the input degrees because those are not very important. But topological sort does use them. If I see that I can read chapter three in iteration one, but there is an edge to chapter one, then this one must have a two. Later on from one, there will be an edge to two, but uh, so it says, well, two cannot be read before. If this chapter I read in iteration two, then this thing can, I can also read in iteration two. But also here, this thing in iteration one, it will update those two values. So six in iteration one, okay, iteration is done. Then four and two apparently need to be read in iteration two. So those two values that I circled should be maximized with two. And then four will have an edge to two, this thing in iteration two, so this thing in iteration three. Done. So one linear solution is in topological sort. If there is an edge from A to B, in the order decided by topological sorts, of course. If A is greater than B, then uh, you say uh, answer of B is equal to answer of A, else answer of B is answer of A plus 1. I will hide myself for a moment. No, not this. This thing. Okay. So, because this case is where I go decreasingly. And actually I shouldn't overwrite, I should maximize. Maximum of answer of B comma that. Because if I if somebody else already told B that uh, it, it cannot be read before chapter five, and somebody else says, uh, but you can be read at chapter two. Well, no, the latest requirement is most important. Same thing here. And done. That's a linear solution because topological sort is linear. Uh, if you are not sure what happens here, then I guess you need to uh, go again through topological sort, just any article, any tutorial online. That's one linear solution. And the other is not to even care about topological sort much, but well, anyway, we will read it in some way. But just to say that every edge has a cost and if it's decreasing edge from bigger value to smaller then the cost is one otherwise it's zero and in such a graph we are looking for the longest path if if you use those red values then it's longest path in a directed graph a cyclic graph so in DAG directed acyclic graph and actually the solution for this is again topological sort but it's just slightly more general that, than what we hear uh, than what we did at the bottom right if a child is already visited before then can we say there is a cycle uh, yes but was that allowed in the problem Oh, yeah, apparently you also need to detect if there is a cycle then minus one but that can be done easily topological sort if you haven't visited all the nodes but right now nothing has input degree equal to zero then you lose so minus one how can topological sort be linear no comparison sort is not a special case of topological sort topological sort doesn't sort numbers it sorts nodes in one of many ways it isn't unique you cannot sort numbers with topo sort. In particular, in topo sort, you're not guaranteed if three will be considered before six in this graph. Uh, so it doesn't sort. Topo sort always takes any of uh, nodes with input degree equal to zero. It marks the neighbors, and just it doesn't. It, the order of grabbing nodes with input degree equal to zero isn't determined. If it was, 
then I inserted order always the smallest, then indeed that couldn't be done in n log n. That was another O of n solution. Well, both of them will require topological sort that just this is some other thing you should know that requires, which requires topological sort as well. That was problem book in n log n complexity and O of n. Uh, later after the stream, it's uh, always, uh, I have my recordings of streams on YouTube, on the Eric Tattoo YouTube channel, and you can go there. There will be links in the description. Actually, they are already there. So if you go to Eric Tattoo, this channel, uh, there will be a recording, and in the description, there will be various links. Uh, we can do longest path with DAC plus DP. DAC with DP means exactly this. When they say DAC, it, the only way to traverse a DAC is top assert. They just didn't mention words top assert. No, I'm not going to code it. But you need to know top assert. Th this, those problems of the weak streams will not be like always implemented. Uh, Sometimes uh, I will sometimes provide pseudocode and sometimes uh, I will do the full solution. Next problem carrying conundrum. I'm updating the link in the chat. Here you go. First, well, let's look at the um, statement. That seemed easier than 1800. Oh, yeah, the difficulties are not, you know, always exactly right. But the linear solution O of n is for sure 1800. The problem was genius. I'm happy that like, yeah, you liked it. Okay, second problem, carrying conundrum. Again, there are two solutions. This one is from uh, 742. They describe addition you know, with the, how do you call it, with carrying, where you add digit by digit and sometimes you add plus one to the left. But they describe it with some mistake, where instead of putting plus one on the next column to the left, you do it on the next next column to the left. Let's add those two numbers, 2039 and uh, 29 and so on, to make sure we understand the statement so this is not 600 I'll make sure yeah 600 i will copy paste the problem title because it's hard to spell paste text two zero five nine and two sorry three nine two two nine seven Six. We add those. And the sum of these two is five and one. Normally you would put one here, you would carry it here, but there is a mistake and instead of uh, doing it for the next column, we actually do it to a column two units to the left. Uh, maybe I will make a small arrow like this. And then three plus seven that's zero and one is carried here this thing now is summed up to zero and the one is carried here then finally this is five uh, the in green we also had one and this is one the result is fifteen thousand zero zero five instead of around five thousand The problem is now, given n count pairs a, b, such that a plus b is equal to n, where obviously the a, the plus stands for this incorrect implementation of the addition. 
if it was standard uh, addition, then the pairs would be n comma zero. Like let's say that n is five. Then the pairs would be five zero for one up to zero five. So the answer is n plus one. But <laughs> that's not the case. We need to analyze this process. And the first solution is something that I'm sure every division one participant knows and just without thinking they can start coding that, but it's not the easier, the easiest code. When we deal with digits, something very common is digit DP. If you don't know it, again, for almost anything I mentioned, like topological sort earlier and now digit DP, you can just Google it and read or watch something on it. Digit dynamic programming. And uh, it's usually done from right to left. So I can. I know the answer, the 15,005, let's say. And I want to count the number of ways to here put, to choose some digits here, so basically to choose numbers A and B, so that I would indeed get this answer, the, the answer at the bottom. I can iterate here over what to put and check if the sum is equal to five. And depending on what do I choose, for example, seven plus eight, there will be a carry. So after choosing those two digits, maybe let's say those are already chosen as something, as some kind of excess, and then I move on. I move to the left. Uh, well, obviously I want to know if there was one carried, so whether this one is here or not two possibilities and then I will also uh, choose some digit for this second to the second from the right column again I move uh, I want to shift it but it seems difficult okay. <laughs> stupid thing and then now I choose some digits there and they might carry something here to this column and always when I have my vertical line that says I already chose everything to the right of it, I need to know if those two uh, bits are carried or not, zero or one. So we can do it with the P of the current position I and some kind of AB where AB are both zero or one. I will just say zero or one, zero or one. So the size of the, of the P is this. Uh, length two by two. And I will do that. So DPIB is the number of ways to choose positions on the right from I such that A is zero or one whether this bit is carried and B is zero or one whether this bit is carried. And then as you go with I from right to left, always you can just make two follow-ups to iterate over two possible next digits. You see if that added to the carry it properly sums up to whatever is in the given number n and then according to that you know to what new state you move so you will know if you carry something here or not i agree that digit dp is overkill this is why i said this is the first solution maybe i should solution one um, over complicated uh, i started by saying that uh, I'm sure that many Division 1 participants would just see this, so they would start implementing. And <laughs> maybe I would do it too. The time complexity is of length multiplied by, I think, 10 squared multiplied by 2 squared. Ten, this comes from iterating over digits. It, it can be improved for sure. Like if you know that the sum of the digits must be 5 or 15, then there aren't 10 squared possibilities. But this is fine. Okay. Well, depending on the length, what's exactly the length? The, the length is small, like nine digits or 10,000 test cases. So this is fine. But now here's a better solution. Now, solution two. Uh, I think we should look again at this drawing we had here. Oh, I erased the drawing, damn it. So we have positions and addition from here might be added there. Addition from here might be added there and so on. And what is very useful to notice here 
is that there are two independent groups, uh, which means why do I need to care to carry a and b instead of which is a carry at position i? Uh, because if you already decided things to the right, they decide two things, two carries. You can watch my lectures on dynamic programming where I say that it's important what is important so far. Uh, like you need to keep in dimensions what is important so far, and after after choosing digits in the suffix, there are two carries that might appear. Uh, yeah. Now we notice that even indices, those that I will mark now, those do not affect the odd indices and the other way around. Those two are independent groups. So if you want to get 15005, you want to get 5, 0 and 1 by using proper pair of digits here, here and there. And that's independent from the other problem, which is I want to get 0 and 5. And if we focus only on this every second, um, at every second digit and forget about those, then this is standard addition where you say, I want to get such two digits that they add to five. If there is a carry of one, it just moves to the next digit. So if the input is 15005, then I want to find some uh, two combinations of digits such that their sum is 105. And also there were uh, what here, zero and five. Also, I want to get such combinations of digits that they sum up to 50. And this is the standard problem of counting pairs AB such that the sum, their sum is n. And we already said at the beginning that the number of ways to get the sum 105 is 106, n plus 1. The number of ways to achieve this is 51. And now the answer is the product of those two values, 106 times 51. If you have 10 ways to do something, 20 ways to do something else, there are 20, 200 ways in total, the product. Uh, so just to make sure we all understand this, if the input is 23411, then uh, the answer is 241, I grab those three digits, multiplied by 31, which is equal to something around, uh, what, 6000? Yeah, around 6000, something. DPI is AI plus BI plus that. But what is your definition of DPI, Momo? It's, it seems that, it seems that you use some sequences A and B. Like you don't know those sequences. You can iterate over what is on position I, but then what is DP? Uh, problem says positive integers. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, positive integers. I see. So I should have said here, not n plus one, n minus one. So also it will be 104 multiplied by 49. Thank you for the catch. And similarly here, it will be 240 multiplied by 30. I didn't even add one there. That this is the answer. Thank you, before Corey. This was solution number two for problem carrying conundrum. And it just shows that sometimes knowing too much and being very familiar with a complicated technique only hurts because, because, uh, because it will give you a long implementation instead of spending one more minute uh, to do something. 105 times 31. Oh, I see. I see. I skipped something. Uh, thank you, Venta Black. The, those three digits that I highlighted, that I underlined, they will give you some pair. Let's call this A and B. And those digits, we know that there is some number of ways to choose C and D, a pair C and D. And what we want to guarantee is that B combined with D is not zero and A combined with C is not zero. So instead of saying that like i told you uh, that from every second digit 
if you get number x and number y this is not the answer the answer also isn't x plus x plus y times y plus one this is the number of non-negative pairs and it was wrong of me to say that instead we should just say x minus one because it would force it would forbid the number made of the blue positions to be zero this number can be zero it's okay if i say that this is the result of adding here two zeros to something this is fine as long as those three digits are not all zeros so instead of doing what i did uh, let's count the number of non-negative pairs and then let's notice that well, there is one pair when one of them is zero in total the a and c are both zero and one where b and d are both zero so uh, the answer is this minus two and to understand that well if you want to later absolve the problem implement it on your own and you're not sure about this just uh, simulate the whole thing on let's say mm, let's see i think n equal to 13 will be enough and it will not give you a lot of analysis does that make sense yeah i think this should be enough so for 13 write down all the possibilities and see then you will understand why we subtract two. So which two of them, if you count all non-negative pairs, which two of them should actually be discarded? Thank you, chat. I'm. It's not that I solved and implemented everything here, and this is how I might miss something. But the third problem is something uh, I'm going to implement: compressed bracket sequence, 1800 difficulty, and this is with constraints up to 1000 i will solve it with constraints up to 200,000. so this is above 2000 difficulty this is the hardest problem today and maybe before that uh, no after that. at the end i will give honorable mentions of some nice problems from ad coder and one more problem from code forces or if i have time i will just talk about them as well updating the link This was hard uh, because editorial doesn't have drawings. I chose this problem also because with drawings it will become very easy to understand, even in linear time complexity. I think that at the end you will think that this linear solution is easier than like, understanding the editorial within n squared. We are given a long compressed bracket sequence, not necessarily valid, and we need to count sub intervals so substrings that are good bracket sequences i will explain what are the constraints as well this problem is difficulty 1800 All right, the input is, uh, is just a sequence uh, like this, uh, maybe four, six, I don't want such big values, two, three, let's just start with that. This, and this sequence is of length and up to 1000. Every value AI is very big up to, I believe one billion, but I will check, yeah, one billion. And uh, this represents the number of opening brackets, then closing brackets, opening, and so on. So the sequence from the very beginning is for open, free close, to open, free close. Up is called one node. Now, in this, this is not necessarily a correct bracket sequence. By the way, if you don't know what is a bracket sequence, then <laughs> you can leave the stream. Um, I assume you, you do know that. Uh, but there are some good substrings. For example, this thing I'm marking. Open, open, close, close. That's good. 
also this thing free open free close and then to open to close that's also good so wait the whole thing is good as well oh yeah it is but that was a coincidence i i can modify it here we go now it's not good and uh, obviously you shouldn't decompress the string there is a reason why it's compressed those number of characters the full string has length at most 10 to 12 power and we don't want that software and game, game development what is my current category science and tech oh there is category of software yeah then i think when i started there wasn't any category for programming and all the programmers on twitch they used science and technology i agree then it should be software and development here we go software and game development thank you marco uh before curry yes that that's one of proper definitions of valid sequence now almost every problem about bracket sequence unless it's really trivial uh, i think about drawing it let's draw something and let's talk whether it represents a bracket a correct bracket sequence i will draw a string open open close open close close either open means plus one to the balance uh, because the stack doesn't you don't need to use a stack you just need to keep a balance uh, so for me the height of this drawing is the balance every open means go up by one every close means go down by one So, uh, graph is good, it, it's balanced. If it doesn't, it, ev <laughs> it never goes below zero, and also it ends at zero. Those are two conditions. So, this is not a good string, because it doesn't end at this position zero, at height zero. And also, this is not a good string. That would be represented by we go down and down again and then up so this string corresponds to this drawing and it's not good because it goes below zero the balance goes below zero uh, now let's draw the thing that they told us to draw uh, i mean this thing i will draw four up one two three four three down To up and to down. I think I prefer to go three times down or maybe even four times down. Yeah, it will be better for me to explain stuff. What is a good range? Good range is if you start at something and you add it at the same height. And in between it never goes below this zero line. So starting why control Z doesn't work for me today. So it means starting from something, going, going, traversing stuff, never crossing below the starting position. So you cannot enter there. That's not allowed. And eventually you will need to finish at the same height. Then it's a good part. So one good substring is from here to there. The other good substring is from here to there. Because you start and add at the same height and also you never cross below this line. But here's an incorrect thing. From here to there, that's incorrect because you go below zero. From here to there, that's incorrect. Because just if you skip things outside then what remains in the middle, it's not a correct bracket graph. It goes below zero. And we will use this to solve a problem. First, quadratic solution. For every pair of mm, colors, let's say, for every pair of types, like these 
four versus, I don't know, this four. So this blue versus this red. I will count how many ways there are to choose one position from one of them and one from the other to say this is a good pair. In this case, I can start from one of those two and I can end at one of those two. So two is the answer. And more generally, if you have some sequence, maybe there is something on the left, that doesn't really matter. Now there is this long part, now there is some middle, and there is something finishing, let's say this part. Then how many there are proper combinations of start in blue and in red? For sure it cannot be above this line, but we can start anything here and end anywhere there. So just we need to say how many there are starting positions here and each of them will match with one ending position. Those here are a few values that we need to know. Let's say that the blue start is called uh, with blue uh, B's. Uh, I will just call it B. Uh, I, this I will call red R and also the white minimum in between is what I will just call min. Then I claim that the start can be anywhere between from max of B R, R up to the minimum of white. So what you should add to the answer is minimum of white minus the maximum of B and R plus one because the, exactly this position is correct as well. Done. To make this drawing, so to make your program understand this drawing, we just have we just need positions of every next height. So we start with balance zero, and then we go through values. Maybe we should go like this with indices. If index is even, then balance plus equal ai, else balance minus equal ai. Every next thing goes down. And if you, as you go also save those points, you, you will know what is the height of every next point. This point, this point, and then in n squared for every pair, something on the left and something on the right. If you know the heights and also you know minimum in between, then you will add this to the answer. If you count minimum just linearly, then the time complexity is n squared. Because for each of n squared intervals, blue, red, uh, not intervals really, uh, okay, intervals, slopes, starting and ending, uh, you will find minimum in n. Then you can have a segment tree to do it like this, but it's not really necessary because the code will be for every start, just keep going to the end and maintain the minimum so far, the white minimum so far, and always every next interval, every next slope, also consider to be the end point to know what to add to the answer. Uh, one more thing is that luckily for us, because it makes code convenient, is we only need to check pairs increasing slope versus decreasing slope. It, it There will never be a good substring from increasing slope to increasing slope. First of all, because there is something in the way. And second of all, is that the, for sure, if substring is good, it must start with opening bracket and end with closing bracket. So starting bracket means going up, so it must be increasing slope. This thing means open, 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 open. If we want to end with something closing, a closing bracket, it must go decreasingly. So we read the input, we understand it like this, where we I want to know the position of points that I will now mark yellow. Those, just uh, gather them, all of them, keep in a vector of pairs or something. And then for each of them, it, it represents, for each such increasing slope, increase until the end, maintain minimum so far, 
and always for every decreasing thing on the right, there will be a simple formula to say how many pairs there are of blue versus red. This is n squared. I want to later anyway code linear solution, so I can, as well I can implement this thing. Let's try to get accepted first in n squared, then in O of n. Look at input format. As I implement, of course, you can ask me questions. How many problems will you explain? This is possibly the last one. I don't want the stream to be longer than an hour and a half because then it's I think, hard to follow along everything. So, or maybe after this implementation, I will I will need to still explain all of n in your solution. We'll see. Maybe I will mention a few other problems. And uh, let's, let's read with this. But in C++, you need to put those two magical lines to make C out fast if you want to use C out. Now I'm going to get that sequence of pairs, points. The first one is just 0, 0. Then for every next thing in A, I need to know the index. If this is even, then it means opening brackets. So you know, for convenience, maybe balance is equal to 0. Uh, why do I have pairs? I only want the heights, right? Yeah, I only want the heights. Heights push back zero. Then the last element in heights will be the balance. Then heights push back height, the last element plus AI. Else The last element minus ai because that's closing bracket closing bracket means going down in the drawing then for every starting position if it hmm, how do i want to go about it maybe let's say keep increasing by two okay and we will start from going from heights of i to heights of i plus one in particular, if the first height is 0, then the next one is 4. That's good. Oh, no. I, I think this will be easier instead of jumping by 2. If heights of i is smaller than heights of i plus 1. So if this is increasing slope. Also, not to get out of bounds error here, and minus 1. This is increasing slope. Now, I from this point iterate onwards and keep some mean white, so mean in the middle. Uh, by default, it's I know, heights of i plus 1. Now keep going uh, from i plus 1 until I guess the end. Minimize with um, da, 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 da. minimize with heights of j. And then what? I guess there will be something like if heights of j greater than heights of j plus 1. Let's look at the drawing again, uh, which is empty. No, it's not empty. So I claim that i is here. This is i. This is i plus 1, which is greater. The height is greater. Then this is for me j. And this is j plus 1 here. So this is the decreasing slope, the red thing. And the what I marked as B earlier will be just height of at I, this thing is height at J, and I also want to know the minimum in between, 
because this will be something blocking me from connecting blue and red with basically horizontal line. So if we have decreasing slope, then I guess I will just do that. Heights of i, red with is heights of j plus one. Also, because I use j plus one, I, it's enough for me to iterate up to n minus two. Um, and I now also have mean white. So then what was the formula? This thing. Mean white minus maximum out of those two. And plus one because it's inclusive, like from, from here to there. This is the minimal height where I can draw a horizontal line, and this is the maximum such height. Also, I think they can be in wrong order, and then the whole thing would become negative. So I believe that we need this. Maybe not. Maybe yes. Yeah, if minimum white is huge, if minimum white is very small, so if there is i, there is j, and in between them there is something very, very low. Then I cannot connect those two parts at all. This would become negative. Hence maximum with zero. The statement said that there is a way to prove that the answer fits in, in what exactly? 64 signed integer type. All right. Seven. That's not right. Let's see if always I'm producing answer that is too big. Four. Not really. It's all over the place. Five. The first test is easiest, so we will go there. J plus one smaller equal i. What J plus index j is always greater than i. I start iterating here. Yeah, you're proposing to compare heights. That not that's not really important for me. I care here about fact whether this mean white whether it is very low. I care about cases like this thing. Okay, so this y mean white is below both b and r, and this is when the value becomes negative. So I maximized it with zero. I'm clearly doing something wrong, and uh, let's see if my heights are right. Four, three, five makes sense. I do I understand the input correctly? I think so. What about this? I will try a much smaller test. Five, five. Okay, here is a counter example. I don't need to uh, understand the big one because for five, five. The answer should not be zero, that's for sure. We have five opening brackets and five closing brackets. And for this, I will do what? Print minimum white. I mean, print all three values. B, min white. We never got here, but the sequence is 0, 5, 0, which is suspicious. 0 smaller than 5, so this might happen for i equal to 0. j starts from 1, continues as long as this. I see here as n, I mean the size of the heights, because heights is actually n plus 1. If I have two elements in the input, the height has size three. So uh, equivalently, I can say just n plus plus. But I, I will leave this line because it's, I think, more meaningful. Uh, six, I think this also counted empty things. Four, 
All right, right. Seven, nine, ten. Seven, nine, ten. It's always about two or three too big, but I believe that I count empty things. I also already noticed that here. The answer shouldn't be six. It should be five. If we have five, five opening, five closing, then I'm not allowed to just choose the very pick. I will visualize what happened. Blue is like this, red like that, and I counted pairs. This with that, this with that, this with that, and this with itself. That's not legal. If j is equal to i plus 1, so they are neighboring, then their peak will also be counted. Five six seven five six seven. That was n squared solution. Next linear solution, and for that we need the drawing. Overflows, right? The heights can become over. Uh, heights will not fit in long banks, I believe. Yeah. A bit of me not to think about that, but then also mean white is long, long, and those are also long, longs. This is one of the cases where define int long, long would help me, but I just hate that. Submit again. Think like this since always? No, of course it's about practicing. When I started programming, believe me, I wouldn't be able to solve this problem. Seems to pass. Uh, past 50 tests. So back to the problem. We are still solving this. Uh, not carrying conundrum. Where is my title? Here it is. Uh, but now I want to be fast. And for this, it really helps. Cool, accepted. It really helps to think about vertical lines. What did I say? Vertical, horizontal. So, still this problem, but O of N solution. We start from the very beginning. I claim that it's very easy to say how many substrings there are ending at this red interval. Are we going to do recursion? That's a very bad question. You don't just think, oh, what if I solve this recursively? Recurs recurs recursion is just a tool. It's a little bit like saying, what if I use an array? Okay, but array for what? Recursion for what? I never, like, it never helps me to think recursion at you know the beginning of solving a problem. Maybe in the middle, I, I see what I want to achieve, and then I will think, oh, I need recursion for that. Mm. All right, how many? There are horizontal lines starting somewhere and ending at the red interval. Uh, I will draw them in green. One, two, three, four, five, six, let's say seven. Mm. So it may be first. If the drawing just looks like this, then the number of substrings ending at this red decreasing slope is equal to the length of this slope. Length of this this part. One, two, three, four. If the red thing has length four, then we add four to the answer. There are some exceptions though. So what I will mark now in blue. This blue and this reddish thing, those are on the same height. 
and this is caused by such valleys like this one. Let's see better drawing of that small thing. If there was big if there is an M shape, okay, then there are two horizontal lines on the same level. This one going from this valley, and also this one at the same height. M shape produces one additional thing. So in this drawing, I claim that red adds red uh, when we see red decreasing slope we should say answer plus equal the length of red plus the number of killed valleys by this i mean such white valleys like this one that were like that i i can go from there here with horizontal line but now this red thing makes them unachievable in the future. If for a moment we no, skip this right now, there will be something in the future, most likely, such that I can go from here there and go from here there. But now, after we add this thing, they are killed because they cannot go anymore to the right. Uh, so killed valleys are, in this case, those two such valleys that they point to a red line and they stop here. And it will turn out to it will turn out that we can easily handle those killed valleys. But for sure, let's say this. And one more case is, if red goes below the minimum so far, so in this case, this was the minimum so far, and red goes below that, then there is nothing horizontal that ends here right we, we cannot start from somewhere and say we end here so actually we should say that the red length is uh, let's say that the red has some low point and some high point then the answer is normally high minus low the length of red but the low should be maximized with mean so far. The, the white minimum so far. Let's see that on example of this exact test. I will compute the answer here. Just let me remove unnecessary elements. Okay. Blue part is increasing, sure, whatever. Then green part. Uh, green part should say that the answer increases by three. So those are the three. This is just length of green. Like answer, it is just increased by length of green. Easy. And now this becomes an available valley, something that will be eventually killed in the future. So, and this means that from here we can put a ray to the right and also we have this still another going ray to the right and the first time when we have some decreasing slope on the right both will end there so we have something additional at this point not just one one horizontal line ends here but also this extra one coming from the valley uh, so to every red later yellow happens sure i nothing can end at increasing slopes then the red one and uh, what happens is one thing can end here one thing can end here and the additional one because of this valley uh, one thing can end here and nothing can end there because this is lower than the minimum so far so i claim that the uh, red is described by those two values high is equal to zero one two three low is equal to minus one the mean so far is zero. That's the among points so far. What is the minimum height, the minimum balance I ever got? This can can be negative. And answer is equal to. If I just say high minus low, that worked for the green decreasing slope. But here it's more complicated. Low should be maximized with mean so far, so with zero basically, uh, because I could. 
everything below zero, no matter when, where red goes. Maybe red is goes much, much deeper over here. But still, I cannot say that some substring ends there because there was no possible start on the same height. Hence, I maximize low with this. High minus low plus the extra valleys, the killed valleys. Let me move that to the code. And the valleys I will first handle linearly, and then I will tell you how to improve it, to make it quadratic. Okay, so there was quadratic solution. And now, what is high again? The, the high point of the drawing. Uh, the height of this. And then low is the, the the next point. <sighs> mean so far is zero. Then for every i, if this is greater than the next one. Then we have something decreasing. High is heights of i, low is heights of i plus 1. Uh, not in long run. Not in long run. Uh, it's unusual when we deal with bracket sequences that balances can actually be not in. I'm gonna guess a stack. Stack is not needed to check if a string is a good bracket sequence. Balance is enough, just one value. But indeed, for extra values to handle that mm, in a smart way, we will need basically a stack, a monotonic stack. Vector long long valleys. Those will be all the valleys, those are uh, the middles of M shapes. So such a point that we went uh, down there, then up. So this is the extra candidate that is ready to hit something to the right. Okay. Mean so far is minimized with the current height and now high minus maximum of mean so far and low plus one not not plus one without plus one maybe no <laughs> if high is five and this minimum is four then it's okay that I'm just adding one all right this plus for every valley if it's high enough, let's think, let's later think if this should be greater or greater equal one of those two. If it's higher than low, so it is ready to hit us here, then answer plus plus. And also it should be erased from valleys. So right now I'm doing this in a linear way per every new decreasing slope. So in total it's quadratic. Now, we need to think about this and also obviously update the answer. Uh, if it's negative, then I would prefer to use zero, obviously. Again, maybe minimum so far is very big and then this becomes negative. And now details, so off by one stuff. Drawing should help. If I have this situation, now this is new high, this is new low. Uh, well, let's see what should happen. Normally, if not for this valley, 
not for this, then I would just increase the answer by one because I would assume that one thing can hit here. But here two things can hit. But this is a tricky situation. This valley is not removed. It can still work. It can still go forward. So that's a very special case. I will say that the uh, well, if this is greater, okay. if this is greater than low, this is easily killed valley. I think I want to do this. All right. Uh, if V is greater than low, it's the following situation. Then this valley will not be visible anymore. So then just answer plus plus. Else if V is equal to low, then answer plus plus because it contributes something more. But still we uh, say that this valley remains. And else this valley still remains because it's, uh, it's to the bottom. And also this new thing that I'm creating, this thing, becomes a new valley as well. With some exceptions. But I will say new valleys push back low. I think that in some cases we shouldn't add it, but we'll see. Uh, I want to run on samples. 577 seven. So, yeah, very close apparently if you if the answer should be 567 and you get 577 seven, then very often it is just about a single if obviously now we can analyze what this uh, what is this into but i think i know uh, okay. did i close my solution i think i know In this situation, this is not a valley, at least not something I should count, because this thing, like if I ever go down to this level, this level will be just hit once from the left. My valleys are supposed to be information that this is hit once more because of something like that. From the left, this can hit you and this can hit you. Both of those uh, points can hit the red point, the, the red point here. So something becomes a new valley only if it's not a new minimum. So I will add exactly that. If low is smaller than the mean so far, no, if uh, greater than or equal to mean so far, then this. If you don't understand that very well, I think it will be good for you later to analyze the sample input too, because apparently for that one, something is wrong. Five, six, seven indeed. No, this is a linear solution because I go through values again and again, but because I only, in general, this is how values can look like. Right now, well, first, uh, this doesn't really count as a valley because it's not some extra plus one if you finish on this level. This is just normal position. This is valley, this is valley. But then this one will make the previous one disappear because it will kill it and so on. And always they will keep such an increasing stack. I claim that actually always in my solution here, this vector is sorted. I never sorted it. Because, but it behaves this way. It, if you see here, if you have new value low, if something in V is greater than, than low, it gets popped because I don't put it to new values. So if the sequence of Alt 1, oh, I see, I, by mistake, I'm including Alt 1 because it changes color for me in one note. Um, if sequence of values is on heights, three, five, eight, and then there is a new valley, new low equal to seven. It will pop eight and then insert itself at the end. I will simplify the code then. Uh, while 
not val is empty and the bug is too big then answer plus plus is pop back and then we have those annoying ties this is the last thing that i need to handle so this basically gets erased this gets erased this is just valleys um, I'm iterating through the end. If a valleys of i is equal to exactly low, then answer plus plus because we have this annoying tie. And I don't know, else break. Because if there are a few sevens in a row and we have the next seven, each of those will is also able to hit the new guy. Sure, overshadowed, I don't care. Five, six, seven, great. And now finally, this is the last bottleneck. If we look at the time complexity of the code, time complexity is usually decided by for nested for loops. We have for loop and inside, inside there is while, but this while only pops. Popping elements from any structure can never increase the time complexity because you needed to insert it. So if in total you insert n objects, you will, in, you will pop only n objects. But this thing is a bottleneck. We have for loop of size n, and inside you can iterate again and again through that if there are ties. For a random input that wouldn't happen, but for, there might be some malicious input where all the valleys are on the same level. And now how do we speed this up? Eh, one possibility is don't think about it too much and use a map, a frequency map. And the other is uh, I can compress this stack a little bit instead of keeping Three, five, seven, seven, seven. I can keep counts. Uh, three appears once, five appears once, seven appears four times. And then if you see that the last pair is the first value is equal to your current value, you will just add this to the answer. Now if you want to add eight, put it to the end. If now there is new value four and it pops previous values. Well, keep popping them, increasing the answer by the count of the elements that you're popping. Done. So the last to the thing is long long int. And that changes the code a little bit. Mm. Well, it's empty. Bug dot first answer plus equal. Uh, valleys back second and now we go for the end not really the end if not valleys empty and if the end the last element is exactly equal to low then grab the count right now what do we push back we often push back a pair low comma one unless the last element is equal to low, then we just increase the count. So here we have pairs, height, comma, count of those, or frequency. Let's run this. Done. And this is linear because we don't have two nested for loops. We have for loop and inside there is while loop, but I already explained why this is amortized often, because it only pops. Submitting. The editorial to this problem says O of n solution is possible, but it was not required, and indeed, n was up to 1000, so we could do n squared, but it was not needed. Uh, so when I set monotonic stack, it's not really some powerful monotonic stack. It's just a vector where elements turn out to be sorted by the first value. So it's very easy to say that the new one pops or something. Convex school is also implemented with a stack. Like in any professional tutorial, Wikipedia article on convex school, they will mention a stack, but we just use, use a vector for that. So here, this part is O of n because only n objects are inserted to this structure, to this vector, so only n times you can pop. Finally, 
you might see that annoyingly I needed to few times check if valley is empty here here there there is a technique to avoid that it's called sentinel you can put some minus infinity or plus infinity first this uh, vector is increasing like three five eight so I will add a fake first element minus infinity I think it's there is something called long long min comma I don't know, zero doesn't matter I will not use this value I could put here 12 the frequency of minus infinity will be 12 sure <laughs> I, I don't really want to put that and now one two and three sentinel is useful not to worry about an empty structure or going out of bounds if you for example keep finding the next greater element starting from some position they will actually make everything really fit in the bounds there is abc in for 20 minutes then feel free to participate i'm not going to i had enough programming today why both took 30 milliseconds those are both just overheads from code forces i uh, i believe that both the, the new one at least should take like zero or one millisecond and just with small enough data and uh, values code forces is not good at measuring things so don't worry about this for big data like n up to 200,000 uh, n squared would be several minutes and this thing would be still milliseconds that was the third problem honorable mentions honorable mentions we solve those two i also recommend and all those links you will find in uh, in youtube video description and also they are in discord in suggest problems channel uh, one is array optimization by the queue uh, from 744 division 3 try to solve it mm maybe not if your rating is below 1500 because you will not know something needed here but that's a nice problem and then there is a cross free matching which is actually in some way similar i would say it's similarly difficult and uh, again try to solve it just don't spend too much time on both of those don't spend for sure more than one hour because maybe you are blocked by not knowing something and here again especially in this adcoder problem cross free matching you need to know how this problem trans transforms to something well known and i want you to figure it out yourself uh, both these problems they will require something well known but i will not spoil that for you Are we solving the icpc mirror i don't know if i find a team maybe i will participate but five hour contests are not good for streaming or recording i don't think that so two hours should be the max limit where people want to watch that was the first edition of problems of the week again just like i said at the beginning the plan is that uh, one week always will be division two like today then next week will be division one problems of the week uh, where i will not explain everything that much because that will be aimed towards division one participants today the ratings in conferences were up to 1900 and here it will be starting from 2000 i will i would for sure not implement something that i implemented here this is not aimed for the same audience. It's up to you to decide which one you want to watch, or both if you're you know, on the border between Division 1 and Division 2. Uh, you can join my Discord server to send me suggestions, and also you can just write a private message to me in Code Forces. But obviously, I will, if I know you, or I know your problem setter, I will consider your suggestion more. 
uh, the advantage of putting that in Discord server is that people can vote. So maybe let's do this. No code forces messages because people can vote. Instead, if you want to suggest problems for next week, ser Discord server of mine or YouTube comments. Below this stream, you can suggest stuff for the next uh, for the next week. And the name is problems of the week, but actually it should be problems of two weeks because every division two problem of the week streams will happen once every two weeks. In the long run, I want to always talk about problems from past two weeks. Today was exception because it's the first edition. So some problems were from a month ago, but still they were recent. And I will adjust the format. I welcome any feedback either here now in the chat or in Discord. I read that. Uh, maybe I shouldn't talk about solutions that much. I should instead highlight like seven different problems, talk briefly about them. I don't know. You tell me. Litco stream, not in the next few days. I don't know. Uh, I do a lot of competitive programming right now rather than lead code. So I want to focus on recent problems. Let's try to keep it recent. The oldest problem today was from a month ago. But here, because every stream will, like Division 2 streams will be once every two weeks, let's try to make it from past two weeks. So the name should really be problems of past two weeks. Best problems of past two weeks. And remember, next stream will be difficult to understand. It will be for Division 1 participants. And I will already assume that you know segmentary, for example, or topo sort. And I will focus maybe more on trying to get problems that is rather than educational, they were just very nice. The problems today were educational. So thank you everybody for watching. Mm. I'm happy to see big numbers. Like we, I think for the whole stream had more than 100 viewers on Twitch. So total with YouTube is more than 150, that's nice. We'll see next time when it's division one, I think it will be lower. Uh, see you tomorrow. I will do some topic stream. I need to decide it now. I don't know. Maybe, for example, DSU. Sunday, tomorrow will be some topic stream. Again, middle of the day. Similar time as today. It will be before the Code Forces round. And Monday, so in two days, there will be, you can check out the calendar, link in the description and now in the chat. Uh, and on Monday, I will make a live stream on the dress rehearsal of ICPC finals. I cannot do the finals themselves because I work. I hear some sirens. Thank you again. Bye bye.